Controllers report there, Tracy. That's the the bills. There oh, there it is. Thanks, Judge. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, let's call the meeting to order, please. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to order the uh, meeting of the prison board uh, for this 25th day of January 2017 uh, and at this point we will uh, request uh, a motion on the approval of the minutes of the prior meetings as submitted is there a motion to accept them as submitted so moved is there a second, second. on the question any discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed the ayes carry at this point, an opportunity for the public to address the board on agenda items only. Anyone who wish to address <coughs> on agenda items, please. Joan Hodewanitz, 220 Linden Street, Scranton. Uh, with regard to item 17-1006, the warden's report, and the attachment, which is titled Document 1, and that is actually response to request at the last prison board meeting. Uh, questions were asked about uh, job opportunities for females within the prison system. And I'm gonna quote some of the explanation given here. Regarding our in-house jobs. Excuse me, ma'am. We'll be more than happy to listen to what you have to say, but this is the board of managers meeting right now. Oh, I'm sorry, so I thought this is the prison board meeting. I my error, okay. I did call the prison board meeting, okay, not the board of managers. You're, you're correct, Ms. Hodewanis. Carry on. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> now I got to start all over. <laughs> Regarding our in-house jobs, females are not afforded the opportunity to work in the kitchen, maintenance, or the laundry. This is based on the fact that the number of qualified female offenders is not high enough to keep these jobs filled adequately. And further on down, um, these jobs are essential to the smooth operation of the jail, obviously, and we cannot inadequately staff them because there will be issues if there are shortcomings regarding meal preparation and delivery, in-house maintenance, or timely washing, drying, folding, and delivery of laundry. Well, excuse me, but I know many women who are very competent in kitchen and laundry tasks, particularly meal preparation and delivery, and the timely washing, drying, and folding, and delivery of laundry. And I would like a little more explanation on what's going on there. Exactly what qualifications do female inmates not have that males do, especially with regard to the kitchen and the laundry. Also, there was some confusion regarding those who participate in the community service program. And then later on, the CSP, that's the community service program, most often is used as a precursor to work release, participation, and frankly, the female offenders usually get to bypass CSP and go directly to work release. Well, why would females get a pass and, me and males have to go through this program? I don't understand that at all. Correctional officers do not supervise inmates at the recycling center. Supervision of those in the community service program is provided by the community correction staff. Female community service inmates do not go to the recycling center 
because there are insufficient numbers of females to supervise them. Well, that's a staffing issue, and we need to know what is being done to correct that staffing issue. Um, so as I read this one-page document, document number one, which is supposed to answer our questions from the last board meeting, I, I say that the explanations uh, do not answer the mail, and I'll be looking forward to the warden's explanation when he presents his report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Anyone else who wish to address on agenda items only? All right. Okay. The I'm a little confused. Are, are we talking about the warden's report now? The warden has not yet given his report. Uh, we will give the public an opportunity to address at the end of the meeting, but uh, our general format is to allow uh, addresses regarding. Okay, I'm just a little confused because uh, this last speaker uh, commented on the document that I assume was prepared by the warden. And is, are we addressing that now? It's part of the agenda. It's part of the agenda. It's document number one on the agenda for the warden's okay. report. So is it appropriate to... The warden is going to give his report. If you wish to comment on it, you may later. All right. Or you may now if you choose. You want? You got a comment? We'll be glad to hear from you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. At this point, um, we'll call on the controller for his report, please. The controller's office reviewed the prison inmate and canteen account reconciliations which were prepared by the pr prison business office for the month of December 2016 and found no discrepancies between the reconciliations and the bank statements. The balance in the inmate account was $417,000.27 as of December 30th of 2016. The balance in the canteen checking account was $342,819.37 as of December 30th, 2016. In addition, as of December 30th, 2016, the canteen account owned two certificates of deposit valued at $15,000 and $131,723.23, totaling $146,723.23. And that concludes my report. Anyone have any questions for the controller regarding his report? We'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the controller's report as submitted. Is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded on the question. Any discussion? There being none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes carry. And uh, <coughs> let me at this point. Um, entertain a motion to approve all the current payables for the Community Correction Center, the Juvenile Detention Center, and the prison, subject, of course, to the final approval by the controller. Is there a motion to approve the payables? It's been moved. Is second. there a second? second? Moved and seconded on the question. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes carry. At this time, we'll ask for a uh, Community Corrections Report and uh, Mr. Jeffers. Good afternoon, board. The community Corrections Report for December 2016, item one, our program totals, male work release had 52 participants, uh, female work release had five, adult house arrest had 141, juvenile house arrest had 19. Item two, our program revenues for the month of December totaled $75,220.20. Item three, our program's expenses for the month of December totaled $97,352.46. Item four, our program's completions, work release had eight, house arrest had 34. Our program violations, work release had nine, house arrest had two. Our program's warrants, work release has seven, house arrest has zero. And our final budget report for 2016 was overtime was at 82% expenses, 99% in revenue at 128%. That concludes the December report. How do you account for a revenue of 128%? <coughs> 
We projected what we were going to take in from our, our numbers from 2015, and based on our numbers from 2015, we, we put in for a budget with, when we're going through our budget hearings, of $625,000, and we, we surpassed that by 28%. That's basically because we moved back to 614 back Spruce Street. Yes, the kind of that is correct. That Be because of the numbers, uh, when we moved back to uh, 614 Spruce Street, the numbers raised dramatically, which also lets uh, house arrest numbers go up dramatically. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jeffers. Anyone else? Any questions for Mr. Jeffers? All right. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to accept the Community Correction Center report as submitted. Is there such a motion? So moved and seconded on the question. <coughs> Being no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes carry. Thank you, Mr. Jeffers. Thank you, Board. And at this point, we will ask for the warden's report. Mr. Betty. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, the average daily in house population for the month of December was 953 inmates. Um, the out of county board, the overtime report, and the community service program participation report are all attached. Um, staffing update currently, our corrections officers' numbers break down to 155 uniformed staff on shift. Two are out on workers' comp. We have two out on continuous FMLA and 18 on intermittent FMLA. Six other and 15 vacancies for a total of 180 officers. Budget. Uh, the revenue is at 106% and expenses are at 92% as of December 31st. Uh, what that means is we brought in $350,000 more than we anticipated and we saved around $2 million in expenses for the year. FMLA currently 13.4% of the uniform staff members have approved FMLA. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, two are continuous 18 or intermittent. Uh, juvenile inmates, uh, currently we're housing three juvenile inmates, two males and one female. Inmates at or past their minimum date, the total is 41. Of that 41, 12 are due to no home plan. Three have had their parole denied due to an unacceptable home plan. 21 have submitted their home plan, but they're waiting for approval. And five need to submit a home plan for review. In addition to that, there are 14 individuals who have been remanded for the balance of their sentence and may qualify for reconsideration for free parole. Extraordinary occurrence reports. There were three extraordinary occurrences recently reported to the Department of Corrections. On 113, a county inmate was placed into the restraint chair after hitting his head on the cell door and expressing suicidal ideations. On 19, a county inmate was found with a sheet tied around their neck. The inmate was moved to a camera cell and a behavioral watch was instituted. Staff, in particular officers Lisa Zader and Renee Halleck, are to be commended for their outstanding efforts in this instance. On 116, a county inmate was placed into the restraint chair after he became assaultive upon commitment. And there was one allegation of a PREA violation in the month of December. It is still under investigation. Uh, actually, the investigation just included yesterday and it was uh, found to be unfounded. The information is going to be processed and forwarded to uh, the district attorney's office. <laughs> um, and finally, attaches a report in response to some of the questions regarding female workers from the previous prison board meeting. And if Your Honor would like, would you like me to read it? I, I, I understand there were some questions or just address the questions. Attached here, I believe it's been distributed. Uh, there were some questions that were raised. Perhaps you can uh, address the questions sure. that Ms. Hodewan has raised. Sure. Um, I'm not sure which that was the first question, if you wouldn't mind reminding me. Well, in particular, laundry, I'll take that for instance. It's an outside clearance position, and you have to have certain qualifications. You have to be sentenced, no detainers, no misconducts within, within the last 30 days, no serious misconducts. There's a, a list of qualifications. You that, that males have those qualifications and females do not? Uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm saying that there's approximately 750 to 800 males. A certain percentage of them will hit that qualification barrier. We have 114 women, it's far less qualified individuals, not enough to fill even let alone the 33 positions in the kitchen. 
um, if, if that same requirement was there with the kitchen, in addition to having no misconducts, having been there for 30 days, positive recommendation from their um, counselor, they also have to be medically cleared because we can't have people working in the kitchen that may have certain communicable diseases because of the nature of working with the food. Uh, so there's, frankly, there's just not enough individuals to fill those positions. That's part of the counselor's functions, yes. Yes. Correctional officers will make recommendations to the counselors. The counselors will fill out a form. We actually have a form that is filled out and it's forwarded to our classification committee. And the classification committee meets weekly and that consists of our captain of security, the head of our treatment department, and our classification specialists and they'll make a decision, yes or no, for the jobs. Uh, certain jobs call for a medical clearance as well. Like, so like what you're people. stating is not that it's gender-based qualifications, it's really the security-based qualifications and have they hit the certain things, um, benchmarks that put them in a position to qualify for less restrictive treatment, more freedom of movement throughout the prison, et cetera. Yes, yes. Closer to their uh, release dates. Yes. There is jobs inside the towers, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, there's a total of, we have, I mean, it's actually a lot of jobs. It's 231 jobs are in the jail. And of those 30, uh, I'll look for my numbers, 34 are women, for women. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it is 15% of the jobs are available to our female offenders. Our female population never hits 15%. It approaches it at times, but it's never that many individuals. Why do you explain why there's state prisons for females and males? Right, and, and that, thank you, Commissioner. There's, there's also that issue where um, we don't allow intermingling. We don't want that fraternization, if you will, between male inmates and female inmates. Uh, issues come out of that. Uh, the only time, Commissioner, and, and I'm sure you're aware of this, the only time we've ever done that is special uh, services for religious purposes, where, you know, Easter, Christmas, when we have a special mass. There's a prison called Bonsi. Yeah. Is yeah. there anything additional, Warden? Any other board Warden, members' questions? I have a quick question. So, Warden, uh, female inmates have the same opportunities <coughs> as male inmates throughout the whole prison for these job opportunities? There are some jobs that, no, uh, the, the women are not going to get a job in our kitchen because, again, we have 33 positions that we have to fill, and there just aren't enough female offenders that would qualify to fill those 33 they positions. Qualified, they'd have that opportunity to be in there. Not in the kitchen. Right. Okay. I understand. I got it. Okay. Of the work, positions. How many working positions for females? Thirty-four. Okay. Versus how many females there is? One hundred and fourteen. Now, males. How many males? Um, one hundred and eighty-seven, for seven hundred and fifty-one, and and I did do the math there. It shows that. 29% of the female offenders would qualify for a job. If you just did the division where it would be 25% uh, for the males. Would it be a security nightmare if you had someone in laundry that was a female walking through the prison, which is 90% males? That, that, would be, that would be difficult. Yes, it would. So, Warden, just to repeat this, this is, more, this is not a qualification issue. This it's, is a security issue. It, it's a security issue. Nothing to do with ladies' qualifications. Right, and even... even it's, Right, and even those kitchen jobs I'm mentioning, mm -hmm. ultimately that's a security issue. If we can't prepare those meals and get them out in a timely fashion, we have a small town inside the city of Scranton that has 900 to 1,000 people in it. We have to be able to, to feed these people, make, they make their meals, do their laundry, and all those other things that come with it. So. That's three meals a day? Yes. Some meals each time? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and that adds up. Nine hundred some blankets, nine hundred some sheets, nine hundred some spots. Yes. Did I hear you correctly that if you have males working in the kitchen, you can't mix them with females? Correct. Correct. That's the issue, yes. That's the issue. It's pre-regulation. Or the other way around, if you have females working in the, in the kitchen, you Correct. can't mix males with them. Right, just like we have females working in the female housing so you units. You and have a preponderance of males who can meet these security qualifications. 
apply. Yes. But there is jobs for females. There is jobs for females. There are 34 jobs. Right, and, and pay rates vary based on the on the job that you have, okay. uh, but there are jobs, and and I'm not, I'm not holding anything back. Uh, the maintenance jobs you get are the highest paying jobs because they call for the most qualified individual. Okay. They do things that I I can't do. With regard to the community service program CSP, why do female offenders usually get to bypass at CSP and males do not? Well. Um, the reason is the majority of our individuals do go to the county recycling center and they perform tasks there. Now the females, it, it actually turns out beneficial. Oftentimes they get into the work release program before they meet the halfway point of their minimum Why sentence. Males get the same break? I understand. Well, it, again, it comes down to numbers. Um, and, and again, it sounds like a lot, but Mr. Jeffers, when he's here reporting, he'll tell you there's 40, 40 individuals that are in the work release center and that there's four or five women that are in the female work release. Those numbers, if you bear them out, there's a temp, you know, it's 10 time difference and that's about the population difference on an, any given day. Um, the males get into the work release center. Sometimes there's a wait period because there's all the beds are taken and we're waiting. Uh, other individuals. <laughs> Yes. That sounds like a double standard. It's not right. necessarily a double standard, ma'am. That uh, uh, while we have far while we have far fewer women out there, uh, as a general rule, uh, women don't as frequently commit as violent offenses and generate the higher and longer sentences that their male counterparts do. And so, as part of the sentencing process. Most, many males get a community service program requirement and females don't? No, it's not a community service requirement. It's, uh, it's more uh, tied into uh, motivation and, and prisoner control that if you've got somebody doing nine months of time as opposed to three months of time, that after, on that nine month person, after the first three months, it, do you want to deal with boredom or do we want to deal with them being occupied? And if they're not in programs, can we put them in work situations? And if we do, then it's a step-down process. That, and, and then finally, the re-entry program in the last four to six weeks of their service time there. So it's just a difference in the length of the sentences that's frequently imposed that's generated more by the violence. The more violent people get longer time and the, uh, well, Women certainly commit violent crimes as well. It's not to the same extent as the men do. I, I'm s sentencing them. I'm okay. I, I I deal with it every day. I have 22 on for sentencing this afternoon, and everyone is different. Uh, we can't make a, just a flat rule that says everyone gets this and everyone <coughs> gets that. There are so many different things that go into formulating a sentence and then imposing the sentence and then carrying it out. The best explanation I can give you, ma'am. So, Warden, it's safe to say that our prison is not discriminating in any way against women. Absolutely not. Because no, that's important to us. Yes. Warden, I have a question on a different area, um, and that is the inmates past the minimum. Uh, we got 21 home plans submitted waiting for approval. Do you have any indication how long? Uh, their minimum day would be or just uh, I, I don't have that information I, I can check and find out I know last month the number wasn't as high as 21 I believe it was 14 but I'm not 100% positive so it is up a little bit and it sounds like we have to give it an extra little push on those uh, parole plan submissions here from probation today and they are not because when you're saying home plan submitted waiting for approval they go to the probation officer who has to check the home plan see where they're living, are there any other problems and violations, uh, and then it is sent to us, the judges, for the final sign-off. Right. But the approval really has to come through probation, so we'll look into that. Okay. Right. Okay, anything else? I have one last question, please. Warden, under uh, extra, <coughs> extraordinary occurrences, item number two, uh, there was a, a female inmate who was moved to a camera cell. Yes. 
I was under the impression all cells had cameras. No, all cells don't have cameras. What percentage would and what percentage would not, would you say? Um, I th I, Dave, do you have the exact number? No, I do not. No. I mean, it, it's, I, it's not even 10% of the cells have cameras. Cells, uh, cameras in the cells yeah. themselves. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Had some kind of issue inside the prison. That's what they utilize for. They wouldn't have them in every single cell. There isn't a prison in the country that has a camera in every single cell. Right. And, and we, it's. There's an issue with suicide or fight. Yeah. Mental health issues we're yeah. dealing with on yes. an ever growing daily basis. Right, certain levels of what we call behavioral watches will call for placement into a camera cell so that we can observe that person's behavior on a continuous basis. And an individual who had just attempted suicide obviously qualifies for, for placement for some time until the psychi psychiatrist comes in, assesses the individual, and decides they, don't, they no longer need to be in that cell. Is there such a motion? Move. Is there a second? second? On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes carry. Okay, back to our. All right. And um, members, other business at this point in time? I'm going to, present, um, I'd rather put all other business on uh, out in public before the public addresses so that uh, we can keep it orderly and they may wish to address other members of business that comes up. I do have something. Okay. Judge. Uh, currently our prison board meets twice monthly and we have done so since May of 2013. We meet once monthly to conduct our normal business of the board as we are doing today. And the second monthly meeting, which was at it in 2013, is held strictly to pre-approve the payment of prison-related bills. Uh, prior to May of 2013, all prison-related bills were approved only by the county commissioners after those bills had been audited, approved, and certified for payment by the county controller's office. Once the prison board went to the pre-approval process, in 2013, the additional monthly meeting was added. The additional monthly meeting requires time, effort to assemble the prison board, and additional costs to the county to advertise these meetings, which normally lasts last only as long as it takes to call for a vote, to pre-approve mostly routine prison-related expenses. I've had discussions with our prison board solicitor and in an effort to be more efficient it seems to make sense to allow the controller's office to audit, approve, and certify for payment all prison bills which routinely fall within the already approved, already adopted county budget such as routine payroll expenses, routine utility bills and other such expenses which fall within the adopted budget. After talking with the prison solicitor, I recommend and have this board consider that all invoices which do not fall within the adopted budget parameters be brought here to our full monthly business meeting for pre-approval before payment. This will allow for the, for the elimination of the additional meeting our prison board has been holding to pre-approve these routine expenses. This board will continue to pre-approve payables, but only those that fall within budget limits. It should be noted that State of Pennsylvania Statute Section 1732 calls for county prison boards to meet monthly, which we will also continue to do under this scenario. We, of course, would also meet in any emergency situation. But with that said, I'd like to make a motion requesting the Lackawanna County Prison Board to approve all prison-related vouchers which fall within the 2017 adopted county budget 
prior to the controller's office auditing, approving, and certifying these prison expenses for payment. Furthermore, the controller's office will present to the prison board all vouchers which do not fall within the adopted 2017 county budget for your review before payment. And I make that in the form of a motion. Is there a second on the motion? The motion and second. On the question, any discussion? We're just removing the payments. Well, for about the first hundred years of this board, it was only one monthly payment. It's been the last two years. And yeah. it was out of an excess of caution to review the bills. Um, the law calls for us to pre approve the bills, and that's why we went to the two meetings per month. But if we do pre approve routine bills that fall within the budget, we're meeting our obligation. Anything that doesn't fall within the obligation, we can bring to this monthly meeting before the entire board for approval by the whole board before payment. Any other discussion on this? Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes carry. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to keep open SEI Waymart. It's very concerning because it's SCR Waymart has a forensic unit and it provides for about 80% of their population. And um, we're talking about 732 employees and 391 of them live inside of Lackawanna County. And um, I'd like to ask the uh, board, I'd like to make that into a motion that we believe that the SCI Waymart should be kept open. Second that. Okay, motion to second. On the question, any discussion? I'd like to voice my support for your position, Commissioner. Uh, I think the uh, the need for SCI Waymart, especially the forensic unit, uh, could not be more critical. Um, my career goes back to the very early 1970s uh, when uh, that facility was then known as uh, Farview State Hospital for the Criminally Insane. Uh, it was one of the largest forensic units in the state. It was a place that was available to us anytime in, in my early days as public defender dealing with uh, those who were charged with crimes and, and dealing with uh, mental health issues. Uh, it was a great facility that was available. I can recall when the uh, time came where it was announced that it was going to get changed into an SCI and there was a public uproar at that point in time saying, but we're losing the ability to have the forensic services there. Uh, the state conceded at that point and said, we will maintain a certain number of beds. We're, there will be an availability. And they have been available to us when we've had very critical situations at the county prison that were above and beyond what we could or should be dealing with. Uh, so now for it to close, uh, the, the waiting time to get a uh, person who is under charges with mental health issues uh, into a place like Norristown or the other facility out west, uh, I believe is, is somewhere uh, in the neighborhood of nine or ten months, which means we have to restrain them. Uh, if we can't let them loose, the hospitals won't take them if there's charges over their heads. The need could not be more critical. And I would urge this board to vote in favor of the uh, commissioner's motion. I had an opportunity to go down and speak in Harrisburg on behalf of Waymart. I also had two meetings with the union. Um, it's an absolute need, so I appreciate the support of the board. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor of sig signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes carry, unanimous vote. Thank you. Any other business for other members? Okay. At this point, I'd like to uh, request an executive session on a personnel matter. All right. Missing a commissioner. He'll be back in 30 seconds. 
you should have liked that people have bottles of water. You just take too many drinks. Oh, you should see when I'm trying to conduct a jury trial and everybody has their bottles there. And, they <laughs> and I feel like I'm the second grade teacher. <laughs> Brian, is the commissioner coming? medieval England when uh, jurors were sent out to deliberate uh, they were denied food water and beds until they returned with a verdict <laughs> okay our executive session has been completed we are now back in session um, at this time I would like to make a motion uh, directing warden Betty uh, to conduct an investigation into the conduct of the additional employees named in the amended complaint and to take all action necessary to be certain that they are treated the same administratively as all previous employees who were named in the civil complaint. Is there a second on the motion? I'll second it. Motion and second on the question. Any discussion? On the question, Judge, <clears throat> regarding the uh, warden's ability to be able to perform that? Well, the uh, uh, the reason that I made the motion was we have received a completed uh, report of Attorney Menor. Uh, very, uh, very, very detailed. Uh, in it, he indicated that he reviewed all grievances, records, reports, the method of preparing all of those items relevant uh, for the relevant time frame. Uh, he interviewed all witnesses who would speak to him or who were permitted by Attorney Comerford to speak to him. There were certain witnesses for whom permission was granted, but who refused to speak to him. He had unfettered access to all of the records of the prison, including the warden's own personnel file, uh, which going back to 1989 contains no disciplines whatsoever of Tim Betty. Um, he conducted interviews with present and past employees, as well as present and past chaplains of the prison. Uh, he reviewed over 221 electronic files, uh, had access to and did a computer search of 73,188 uh, emails in the file of Warden Betty, and 9,742 specific emails were reviewed by him. And after reviewing all of that, found absolutely nothing to support the allegations made against Warden Betty. And uh, therefore, I felt the motion is appropriate that we get our warden back to doing his job uh, with the unfettered authority that he's entitled to under the law. Any further discussion on the question? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Um, okay. And opposed? And one abstention. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. At this point, um, opportunity for the public to address the board. Please state your name and address, sir. Bob Bolas, Scranton. And appreciate the opportunity to address it. I didn't think I was going to make a career here today. but Well, you've it, been known to extend some of our meetings in the past, <laughs> Mr. Bolas. Well, there have been a lot of issues, and I couldn't be happier to hear that uh, Warden Betty has been cleared. I've known uh, Warden Betty a long, long time, and I've known him always to be a man of credibility and straightforward and being honest and it's couldn't be happier to know that the shadow that was cast over Warden Betty cast over all of us and it's been removed and uh, now he can get back to doing his job and what I would like to ask is that Warden Betty be allowed to do his job run his prison as he sees fit as a business be held accountable naturally by the board but do the job he needs to do He's the kind of guy that will get to the bottom of an issue. He's not going to skirt around the issue. His deputy is going to get there, and they're going to get the job done. And how do I know that? I was there. 
I spent time in that jail. And I saw people that didn't do their job, and I saw a lot of people that did do their job. And uh, he'll make the changes, I think, that are necessary. And one of the changes I like to see him make is that inmates get pillows. This has been a sore spot with me since the day I was in there. And uh, they're available. I saw the city of Scranton spend over a million four on legal fees to count a boy. We could have bought some pillows with some of the excess change that they left laying on the table. So when we're doing that, and we're looking at the staffing and other things, let him make the decision who to keep, who to replace, how to rotate his people. Because when you mandate somebody hour, like shift after shift, and put them in there the next day, their temperament isn't going to be straight. I don't care who it is. None of us could do that. So there are things that have to be done that I believe he should be allowed to do. He knows his job, and I think let him do it. You know, he's a good leader, he's a straight shooter, and uh, he could do it. I'd like to see him get involved with the medical. As you know, I felt the medical is substandard there. I was treated with substandard medications. Uh, my life actually was put in jeopardy by Zaloga and correctional care, and that's proven out by medical treatment I received after I walked out of there and the treatments I had to take that he ignored and he wasn't qualified or capable of performing nor would he allow somebody to go because it all became dollars and cents. And we can't put dollars and cents on the health welfare of either the CEOs or the inmates. Another thing I'd like to see is, uh, and this was brought up, is the education of the inmates, getting their GEDs and doing stuff like that. Maybe it's time for us to reach out to the school board and get teachers to volunteer to come and teach, hold a class at the jail, or maybe if judge's opinion they're not violent people that are in for child support or something of that nature could actually go to one of the institutions one of the schools mr bolus the wheels are already in motion to i i understand that ged and to restore eotc training programs I, we are looking to that i do your honor okay. i just threw out a suggestion that some people may be able to actually go to the facility too just to help out and defray some of the costs on the sheriff's department too uh, expenses. Everywhere we look, moving an inmate around is cost, no matter which way we look, whether he comes to the court, whether he's moved somewhere else. So anywhere we could save some money and cost goes to the efficiency of the operation. And you've done a good job. And now one of the other things I really want to bring up, and this has annoyed me more than anything. There's been a talk show host uh, who's lambasted at me, lambasted at everybody on this board, Steve Corbett. He was here earlier. I wish he was still here because I'd like to invite him to come to the lectern here. Don't have his wife talk for him. Let him come up here and talk where he can't mute the mic, where he can't shut people up and have his own way. And I'm sick and tired of him, and so are a lot of other people. He criticized everybody on this board. Increase our district attorney. I, I don't know that it's a proper place for a debate. We are public servants. We are subject to being challenged by the press and by uh, anyone who... Uh, this is America. They have a right of free speech, and they should be allowed to... Call. I'm all for it, Your Honor. What I'm giving my opinion, contrary to their opinion, is that there's nobody on this board. I've known you for how many years, Judge? At least 40 years. I've been before you. You didn't take any difference with me than you did with anybody else. You did your job. You did what you were put on the bench to do, and I applaud you for that. Do I agree with you? Hell no. Nobody does when they get sentenced. But you did your job. The sheriff's done his job. Our DA's doing his job. And that's the difference here. And people that are going to criticize the integrity and credibility of this panel, this board, that you're going to put something before it, shouldn't even be allowed in the room to talk because they have no clue who you people really are. I know you all firsthand. And I never received any preference any way, shape, or form. I was treated just like anybody else in the door. And that's the difference with sex to your credibility and your integrity to be on this board. And I applaud each and every one of you. And it wasn't a fun time for me, and it wasn't a fun time for you guys either. But you did your job, and that's what it's about, and that's what the warden's about. That's what the jail's about. Do his job, the COs do their jobs, but let's look at them in the respect of who they are and the mandating and the hours they got to work and try and get a little more efficiency there, and I think we'll be better off. And I heard her talk about women. If there's an opportunity for women, sure, 
people go to the recycling center. My views on the recycling center or any other business that an inmate goes to should get a paycheck and credit for time served and work for the company because the company is getting free labor and they're the benefits of it, whether it's my company or anywhere else. They come spend six hours, they get a paycheck for six hours, and they still get time served. It'll give them the incentive, the interest to go do what they want to do. And we all benefit because we get them out of the jail a heck of a lot quicker. They pay their fines, they pay their costs, throw somebody in for child support and he can't go work and his costs keep accruing. Put them out to work. Make them work, give them a W-2, and everybody will be happy to go there. But when you're going for free, don't do it. I wouldn't do it. I want to get paid for what I do, and I'm sure everybody in this room feels the same way. I'm all for keeping Waymark open. I've spoke to that earlier uh, in the commissioner's meeting. They may have to make modifications, just like we have to make them, to get cost efficient, to follow in our parameter, and efficiency is what it's all about. I'm happy to say I brought the president to Scranton. I'm happy to say we were a major supporter of him. I put Scranton in the limelight, not only locally, nationally, internationally, and worldwide. And couldn't be prouder to say I'm a Scrantonian and to be able to stand here today before this board, given everything I've gone through. I've never walked away from the city or anywhere else. But keep doing the job you're doing. You're credible. You guys are up front, guys. And I respect every one of you. Thank you. Okay. And I have to leave. I have another appointment to go to. I'm sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Um, Bev DeBarros uh, on Quincy Avenue in Scranton, PA. I'm here to talk about an idea that I have for getting books into the prison. Now I know we can't do the library system, we, we looked into that. But I know that in the blocks, well, first I'll talk about the women, but I think this can be expanded to men. In the blocks they have a bin of used books. Uh, paperback books and from what I understand the books are old torn apart everything and these people have time to read and it would be good for that so my idea is to be trained to come into the conference room at the uh, prison and ha bring our boxes of books which will never run out of used good books from the library sales, from the library itself, from uh, EOTC has books available for us, <coughs> and also people, um, librarians, school teachers, qualified people. All we need is some training and direction on how to process these books. That's always been the holdup. Oh, we can't take books in because they have to be examined, rightly so. but. Uh, it's probably too much for the staff that's at the at the prison now so this is a way I think a volunteer system that could work um, actually I presented the idea to the warden uh, a couple months ago in a written letter in this room and I didn't hear no I didn't hear yes or I didn't hear who to go to for this so that's why what I'm asking could we do this um, and I'd like to quote six, uh, three sentences from this uh, Times article which was de this past December 26 from Dr. Macquarie the, the health column and he quotes from a, a study in the journal social science and medicine found that reading books is you know we all know how good that is so the three sentences are one bib bibliotherapy is a term used to describe the practice of using books as therapy in the treatment of mental or psychological disorders it uh, is also advocated for individuals undergoing a difficult time in their lives also reading not only relaxes you to sleep better but also relaxes you during the day. Studies show that readers benefit from a lower blood pressure, heart rate, and respiratory rate while reading. 
And lastly, people suffering from depression can benefit from self-help books and books with uplifting and pleasant sub subject matter in addition to typical treatment such as support groups. So um, if we could have some direction, uh, a time for a group of us to meet, I think in that conference room, bring our books and be willing to be taught how to look through these books and have them approved, um, put back in the bins and sent to the blocks. And I think it's a suggestion that is very humane, uh, very uh, appropriate, and it seems to me it might be something that can be done in a very cost-effective way, especially through the use of volunteers. Uh, I'm sure the, uh, the warden and his deputies would have concerns about security, <coughs> but uh, they can be addressed, and, and I can also indicate we might even be able to make uh, individuals who are sentenced either through the ARD program or other programs who are doing community service to devote time to it. So uh, I, I would ask the warden to give some thought to it. Uh, we will ask our special evaluator to give uh, further thought to it and maybe we can organize a volunteer type thing for it. But thank you. Anyone else from the public? Hello, I am Dr. Stephanie Bressler, and I live in Scranton, and I am with the Progressive Women of Northeastern Pennsylvania. At the last meeting, I asked a number of questions about equi equitable treatment of um, male and female inmates in terms of paid job opportunities. Uh, I looked for the agenda on the website yesterday. Uh, it was not available in the afternoon. I understand that the agenda was uploaded, downloaded, uploaded uh, late yesterday afternoon. And uh, a document that was not really identified except for document one is the warden's response to my questions. And so this morning I was able to look at it. I haven't had an opportunity to really analyze uh, his document, but I can say that it seems to be very, very superficial. Uh, we have to look at not just numbers. Uh, the document included the numbers of jobs uh, available to males and females. It really did not tell us uh, whether those jobs actually get assigned to males or females. Uh, so we really don't know. We don't really have a lot of information here. We also have to look at the quality of the jobs and the pay scale of the jobs. According to the document, the pay range is $2 to $8 uh, a day. That's a big difference if you're uh, in jail and you, you need some money just to buy some incidentals. So whether you get $2 a day or $8 a day can make a big difference. Uh, there's also uh, a difference in the quality of jobs. So if you're working on the cell block, block versus your opportunity to get out into the mo more common areas, that's a big difference in the quality of jobs. Uh, if you're allowed to work in the kitchen, uh, do you have access to better food or to more food? I don't know the answer to that question. But certainly there's a difference between uh, job quality if you're working inside or if you're working outside. Uh, so there, there are a lot of questions to ask here. Uh, these differences can really translate into inequitable treatment. Uh, I heard the explanation for some of the differences here in terms of rules and qualifications. And rules and qualifications can really result in disparate, a disparate impact, disparate uh, treatment. The courts, uh, and there is a legal basis, as you know, for equitable treatment here. The courts have supported principles of equality where disparities amount to constitutional violations, and economics have not been accepted as a good reason or an adequate explanation for disparate treatment. So I'm really going back to the question I had the last time. Uh, how do I find out 
if female inmates and male inmates are given equal opportunities to make money uh, in the prison. How do I get that kind of information? Telling me that there are certain numbers of jobs available for males and females and looking at the percentage of males and females in prison and the percentage of male and female jobs doesn't really answer that question. So how do I get that information? Matt, the warden explained it, I believe, as clearly as he could, mm -hmm. given the circumstances. Uh, I hope it's acceptable. If it's not, if you address some specific questions to us, okay. uh, submit them in writing, and I'll see if we can get your written answers. Okay. Them. I certainly will do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Hodawanis? Uh, Joan Hodawanis, 220 Linden Street, Scranton. Um, as uh, Stephanie pointed out, the agenda didn't get posted until uh, late yesterday afternoon. We've been and trying to get that updated. I mean, it's just a matter. No, of I, 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 my point is that um, you know, for those of us in the public who want to review the agenda and the backup documents, you know, please try to make it so that it's there at least, let's say, not later than 5 p.m. the day before meeting. Then that gives the general public time to access the agenda, uh, look at the relevant backup documents, and, and make cogent comments when we come up here to the uh, podium. You know, um, Marie Shoemaker was telling me that she was, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, you know, going through the county commissioner's background and everything else. And, and you know, we, we want to be um, conscientious <laughs> citizens, too. Also, I was surprised that uh, I don't know who prepared the document, the uh, agenda, but to list, you know, the warden's response to Stephanie's questions as Doc 1, to me is, that's a little disingenuous, okay? It should have said response to previous questions, and then people would have clicked on it or not clicked on it, but to, you know, when you see Doc 1, uh, you don't know what that's about. Um, but, you know, I'll let that pass. Now, I am pleased to see that since the last month, there is a web page for the prison board, which lists all the members of the board, okay? Uh, it lists all the uh, dates of board meetings, and it did have one document linked in there, the 2016 Prison Board Study Committees, which is a Excuse September. Me, I, 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 let me just interrupt you before all of us forget it. Um, and that is that we're going to be amending the schedule of meetings based on the motion that we passed. I understand passed. that. Okay. And I'm sure that you that will also will. update that document. Uh, but this uh, prison study dated September 16th was linked in there, and it's a very good document and very interesting reading. Uh, there are a lot of questions, uh, you know, that you want to know what's the status of this recommendation and that one. Uh, but I'm, I'm curious, this one is the only study link there, and I'm sure you'll link others. How often do you do this uh, study? Is this an annual event? Um, That's the first time it's been done in the history of the prison. Are you planning to do it on a periodic basis? Um, well, what we would like to do is implement as many of those improvements as are fiscally and realistically possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then it'll be up to future boards to decide what they are going to do when. There was no mandate for this. This was something that grew out of this board. Well, I think this is very good because it shows oversight by the board. And I would strongly encourage you to try to do something like this maybe on an annual basis or every two years. And Judge Girol is being modest. It was his idea. He brought it to the board when he became prison board chairman. Well, see, great minds think alike. He implemented it. He did it. Okay, but I would recommend that you do this on a recurring basis. What I would also like to see, if you've never done it before, is a study in which you solicit input from the inmates themselves. Okay. Get that on a daily basis. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not the kind of uh, input I was looking for. I'm talking about the kind of structured thing we do in the military when we assess command climate on an annual basis as part of a commander's evaluation. And what will happen is, you know, soldiers and their family members, you know, uh, will be asked for their opinion on a variety of subjects. And it can be done anonymously if necessary. And it gives uh, higher level commanders 
um, a feel for the health of the command climate in that particular unit. I think it would be useful for you, uh, and I understand that some people are going to give you false information, but to on a regular basis solicit input from the prisoners, what do they see as the issues in the prison? Uh, what changes do they want to see made? Okay, And make it a public document. Just like you sometimes get allegations and they're unsubstantiated and you don't have to pursue them, that's fine. But I, I think you have an, uh, a professional as well as a moral obligation uh, to make sure that inmates are treated as fairly and as humanely as possible. And I think you need to solicit that input. Uh, I mean, I was not pleased to see some of the things that came out in the last 10 years about the prisons, like one thing after another. You know, wardens using prisoners, you know, for personal work. Uh, a woman having a baby on a cell floor. These kind of things. If there are issues in the prison, you should be the one to find out as fast as possible and correct them as quickly as possible. We don't need the scandal of the month from the, from the county prison. So that's uh, a recommendation I make. My last question to you is, I understand from reading this report that there are always a number of vacancies, uh, staff vacancies in the prison. Is that true? You have vacancies right now? Yes. How do you advertise these positions? I believe they're on the county website. Are they, are they on the county website? Okay. So where do I look on the county website to see a listing of those vacancies? Now, and that w is it just for the prison or is it for all county all position? All county, but we could also post the ones just for the prison on the prison website at your suggestion. That's a good suggestion. Yes. We updated yeah. we tried to make it more user friendly for The them. reason I say this is these are public sector jobs, and you should give the local people an opportunity to apply for them if they're qualified. I had this argument with the Colts Board, which I understand the county commissioners do not control. Uh, and basically, they like to advertise their positions in esoteric transportation websites and magazines. If it's a public sector job, local people should have the first shot if they're qualified. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hodewanis. Anyone else? Well, finally, in conclusion of this meeting, before I ask for a motion to adjourn, uh, I would just like to state that it is it should be very clear that uh, this board sets policy but our CEO is Warden Betty, and we have total confidence in him. Thank you. Motion to adjourn? Seconded? Okay.